So, today I'm behind the scenes in our British Seals breeding program. It's quite loud, that's sort of part of the experience really. So, most people that come to the zoo don't get to see this side of what we do. This is behind the scenes in our internal quarantine area. So, we've got the seahorse tanks here on display. And those are viewed from the other side, so when you go around the zoo, you see the seahorses in these tanks from the front. Behind the scenes here, this is where we do all our seahorse husbandry. Also where we keep our baby seahorses and where we carry out all our everyday essential husbandry and maintenance of our baby seahorses and food and systems maintenance as well. So, at the moment, we've got these baby short snouted seahorses. These guys are growing really, really fast at the moment. So they're now six months old. The last few weeks, they've really, really started shooting up. When they were first born, they were born live and they were absolutely tiny. So just to give you an idea, when they were first born, they were smaller than the brine shrimp in that tank at the moment that they're feeding from. So really, really tiny. Um, and we're so proud of these guys. They've taken a lot of TLC to get to this stage. They're really, really doing well now. So these are short-snouted British seahorses, and we were um, the first um, institution to successfully breed them from British wild caught seahorses in 2010. So um, this is a really, really exciting thing for us at the moment. We do also have <coughs> um, a spiny seahorse, who we are hoping we will get some fry from very soon. Um, this is the time of year that seahorses breed. So while we're down here with the baby seahorses, this is the food that we have to prepare every day behind the scenes for them. In here, really teeny, teeny little specks that you probably can't see with all the movement on this video. But these are absolutely pinprick-sized Artemia, newly hatched Artemia brine shrimp from eggs. This is what we have to feed our baby seahorses. So when they're first hatched and they're really, really tiny, floating around in the water, they actually get carried and float around for the first few months after they're born, before they start to settle and, and cling on to things to feed. This is the food that they need, so we have to have this food constantly um, being maintained and being hatched out every day to make sure that we have the right size and the right amount of food for the baby seahorses. And we also have the adult brine shrimp here. So these are bigger, these are for our adult seahorses. Obviously, just as important that we look after the adults while they're breeding to try and make sure that we maintain optimum health and fitness for them. So again, this is part of a daily cycle, a daily regime where we have the really small food hatching, we have larger food that we hatch out, we also buy in food as well. So we quite regularly buy in live food that we're able to feed the seahorses in order to make sure that they stay as fit and healthy as possible. And we can also look at enrichment of that, so we also add particular nutrients and things that they need to keep them healthy. So while we're behind the scenes here, you can see there's these, these bright lights as well. So what we do with our seahorse system, in order to maintain the optimum breeding for this time of year, we want to obviously make sure that they're really comfortable and they feel as natural an environment as possible. So we do have natural seawater here, but we have all these systems keep it running smoothly. And over the tanks, as well as having all these flow suits you can see we've got these bright lights. And what we do in the aquarium, obviously, we don't have the same day length indoors. So we actually replicate the day length at this time of the year. We gradually keep the lights on a little bit earlier in the morning, a little bit later at night, so that by the summer, we have the natural daylight cycle for the seahorses. That means that the adult seahorses are much more likely to breed when we want to breed. They feel like they're in a really natural environment and it maximises the breeding potential for every season. Behind me here, there's all kinds of kit and caboodle. We've got our water monitoring units here for all the tanks. And this very, very noisy, absolutely enormous device is about £50,000 worth of kit here, which we got from the European Fisheries Funding in 2015. Without this, we would not be able to do any of the work that we do with our seahorses. So this maintains perfect water conditions to breed the seahorses. This is one of the few places in the aquarium where we recirculate water. So the rest of the aquarium has water from the sea, goes around through the system, flows back out to get into the sea. With the seahorses, in order to get the conditions exactly right for them and to replicate those conditions, we have to recirculate the water. And obviously this is quite an expensive thing to do. That's what all this kit's for. So we've got protein skimmers, we've got UV filters, We've got water that comes through, gets really, really scrubbed and cleaned up and recirculated. We have temperature maintained as well. So obviously it's a little bit warmer in the winter, we have heating for them then. And again, we want to replicate exactly the right temperature from this time of year to get them breathing. So as well as all this kit, we've got 
our all singing, all dancing control panel here, which actually gives us feedback and shows us where we are with all the different speed outs of all the temperatures, of all the systems working and monitoring. Obviously there's an alarm on there in case anything gets too high or too low so that we can monitor that from a laptop externally and come in and make any changes we have to make. So this is just to give an idea really about behind the scenes and, and how much is involved in maintaining and running the Seahorse project on a daily basis. And it's over a thousand pound a month just to keep all this kit running. But without it, we wouldn't be able to um, create the perfect breeding conditions for the animals or to replicate that. So the idea being, we know exactly what temperatures we're looking at, what oxygen concentrations we're looking at, and when we know what is right for seahorses to breed, we can then make sure we maintain that so that they breed and continue to breed. Um, and that's the, the reason really why we need all this kit for them. Obviously in the longer term, once we're successfully breeding them and we've got enough youngsters and we've, we're working with Project Seagrass to look at where we can release them to around the coast, all the places they used to be found around Wales, um, other parts of the UK where they're pretty much extinct now in the wild in their natural locations. We want to look at re-releasing them there, both species in the future. And the, the stage we're at with that at the moment is that we have to be able to breed sufficient juveniles and we have to make sure we're really, really happy with the genetic strength of those, make sure they're coming from a really healthy breeding stock. Um, and also, we need to know where to release them. So we're working with Project Seagrass um, and Sea Search and a lot of other environmental organisations that are collecting data to help us do that. And that will involve acclimatising as well. So you obviously can't just throw the animals out there, even if it's the perfect environment for them. So we have a lot ahead of us in that respect. And at the moment, we have a lot of control on the systems and we have to move away from that in order to look at being able to release the seahorses back into the wild. And so that is sometime in the future yet. But this gives you an idea Sorry about the noise, this is our system, and as I say, this is behind the scenes. So while we're closed to the public, it's a really good opportunity to show people the kind of thing that goes on outside of public view, um, and why it's so essential and also so expensive to keep all these systems running for us in your screening programme.